Hey, thanks for joining us, everyone. Sure appreciate you being here. It is Wednesday, halfway through the week here. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Rombor. Thanks so much for being with us. And the warmest day of the week, that's what's about to happen. So here we go. Yeah, <laughs> I will tell you, in North County, there was quite a bit of fog to start off uh -huh. the morning well, here. Well, exactly. And that's what we're looking at. Del Mar, our beach camera, those doggos not enjoying uh, too much of the morning view because there isn't one. Uh, we've got <laughs> a lot of fog as we start off the day, especially up toward the North County, like you heard from Eric. Uh, that's what is kind of pervading the coastal areas as we kick off your Wednesday. The important thing to recognize with this one is that it's not extending too far inland. So many of our inland valleys are uh, spared from this fog as opposed to Monday and Tuesday. It's also a much more shallow marine layer, although lower down, uh, it's more shallow. So we should expect the sun to peak out really quickly into 8, 9, 10 a.m. Temperatures are going to warm their way into the 70s and 80s. It's looking like a very nice day, as Netta mentioned, the warmest day of the week before we start to cool down toward Mother's Day. Jenny's checking up on what traffic looks like on our morning as well. And uh, hey, it looks like your maps there agree with uh, a little bit of fog, right? Yeah, I mean, foggy for sure, but quiet nonetheless. No major issues with your travel time. Coronado Bridge, yeah, a little bit of volume. 67, right at Cloudy Moon, there is reports, there are reports, I should say, of debris. And then, yeah, as Evan was mentioning, especially along the coast, the five, Oceanside, Encinitas, Damar, really foggy. You will have to slow down, but currently no major delays or crashes. We are closing in on four months since the disappearance of Chula Vista mother Maya Miliate. Now family and friends are calling on local leaders to get involved in this search. News 8's Chris Grove live in Chula Vista with a closer look at this latest push here. Chris. Yeah, to push for things to be expedited for more resources to be used. Now important to note this is still a missing persons case, even though the FBI and CIS and even the district attorney's office have now been involved with the Chula Vista Police Department. But even still, we saw this group of family, supporters and friends gather in front of the Chula Vista Police Department yesterday to push for an expedite an exp expedition, I should say, uh, to quick quickly get things moving here in this case. Now, this same group then went across the street to City Hall to again voice their support for the mayor and for the city council to get involved for them to have resources be put into writing for the Chula Vista Police Department to use. In fact, some of the people that organized a lot of the searches for Maya uh, played, pleaded with the council as well, too. And they also told us that organizations have offered to use their cadaver dogs to search for Miliete, but Chula Vista Police Department turned them down, saying that they didn't want any interference in their investigation. As you might imagine, there's a ton of emotion when friends, family and supporters talk about Maya. Four months have gone by and still no word on where she could be or what happened for her. Her sister says it's been too long waiting for answers. Today we're hoping we can urge uh, to the police department um, to expedite my sister's case, to solve her case, to get some closing, to get some answers for my family and for her three children. We just want, we want to tell her three children where mommy is. They've been waiting for four months. It's, it's way too long. Still hard uh, to hear that pain in her sister's voice. And now the mayor, the city council, they heard many of the same messages that you just heard now. They thanked the people for that came out for making their voices heard, but they didn't fully commit or actually commit to much of any of the requests that were made by the public just yet. Eric and Netta. Chris Crow, thanks so much for keeping us posted on that. And San Diego County now reporting its first case of a COVID-19 variant believed to be behind that surge in cases in India. Public health officer Dr. Wilma Wooten says one case of the B1617 variant has been detected here. It reportedly has multiple mutations, which could make it easier to spread. Seven different variants have been found in San Diego so far, which Dr. Wooten says continue to be a public health threat. Now, the county also reported 186 new coronavirus cases. One new death was reported. That brings our total now to 3,713. COVID-related hospitalizations rose by 18 patients. Here's a look at the vaccine distribution numbers. More than 2,847,000 doses have now been given, and that means nearly 53% of people in San Diego have been vaccinated, with over 38% being fully vaccinated. Those numbers have kept steady since last Monday. Today, the San Diego City Council is set to begin hearings on Mayor Todd Gloria's proposed $4.6 billion budget proposal. 
The mayor says his budget aims to help San Diego recover from the pandemic by getting people back to work. It also includes funding to address homelessness, street repairs and climate change. Today's hearing begins at 9 a.m. Some people are not happy with the mayor's budget proposal. The group's Youth Will and Community Budget Alliance say they want Mayor Gloria to reverse a $19 million increase in funding for the San Diego Police Department. Instead, they want to put the money towards alternative programs that they say will prior prioritize communities of color. So they're going to be holding a media conference outside City Hall later this morning. And restaurants around town could soon get some more help as they try to get through some of these challenging times. Yeah, this will be the center of an important county vote later on this morning and news 8's Allison Royal joining us live in Normal Heights where so many businesses are impacted as well to explain what they're voting on. Good morning Allison. Good morning Eric Ganetta. Well restaurants have had a difficult time that is no secret. I mean think of all of the different restrictions that they've been put under. They are allowed to open. They're allowed to close. They can open outside. They have to close. They can open inside and outside but only a certain percentage. It has been complicated to say the least but there could be an extra lifeline thrown their way pretty soon. So they still say that foot traffic is down depending on which restaurant you ask. Some say that it's down 20 percent. Others say it's close to 50 percent. But nonetheless County Supervisor Jim Desmond says he thinks he has an idea that might help. Help. So he has a proposal to help these struggling restaurants and part of that proposal would be to waive permit fees for all San Diego County restaurants for the fiscal year of 2021 through 2022. To give you an idea, that is savings between $1,000 and $2,000 per year. According to the county, this would all be thanks to the America Rescue Plan Act. Opponents of the proposal said that they are worried this would hinder the county from those restaurant safety inspections. However, Supervisor Desmond said that the county will continue to run inspections as well as enforce those other safety precautions that we have come to get used to over the past year. Restaurant owners said, hey, one or two grand might not seem like a lot, but to us, it really makes a difference. I've made decisions I've never expected that I would ever make. Furloughing all my hourly employees, temporarily closing locations, permanently shutting one of my restaurants, as I said. When we first opened for a limited dine-in, I was thrilled to bring back my hourly employees. I felt that they were finally a light at the end of the tunnel but no longer after that we were told no longer limited dine-in and we had to go back to take out only such a complicated process that all these restaurant owners have gone through including some of these restaurants here in the normal heights neighborhood now that meeting is at nine o'clock this morning erica netta yeah, some great spots right where Allison is. So, uh, you know, supporting them has been key. A lot of people have tried to do, and it's Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, a lot of people are going to get out there and uh, <laughs> take in a nice lunch on Cinco de Mayo here, maybe a margarita. They just want to know if there's going to be clear skies and sunny skies here. I can answer that for you. Oh, there good. will be. Oh, okay. uh, however, we do start off the morning with quite a bit of fog. I know it's misleading when you look outside and see this. You're probably thinking, we're not going to see the sun today, but we are actually. This is a much more shallow marine layer that we're dealing with as opposed to the, uh, you know, kind of intense overcast skies that we saw from Monday and a portion of Tuesday. This marine layer also isn't extending toward your inland valleys, really only affecting your coastal communities. So by the time we get to about 10, 11 a.m., 9 even, we could start to see those clouds part quite a bit. And we're moving toward another day of sunny skies out there. Temperatures are very mild right now. 57 degrees in Carlsbad and Del Mar, 62 in San Diego, 47 in Ramona and 60 at Palomar Mountain. Now let's take a look at that fog as we speak. Less than a mile of visibility in Fallbrook, in Miramar, in El Cajon. Oceanside and Carlsbad are just at about a mile. Kearney Mesa just over a mile. Uh, so we're definitely seeing some trouble out there. But by the time we get to the afternoon, we've got a lot of sunshine that'll be beaming through. Temperatures warming their way up to the mid 70s along the coastline, mid 80s inland. We've got a warm day today, the warmest of the week before we start to see some cooler temperatures move in. And those cooler temperatures are going to lead to about a little bit of cloud cover along the coast again toward your Mother's Day weekend and they'll drop toward average. So notice these highs that we see outside right now. They're going to be trending about 10 15 degrees above average. The cool down that we have on the way just knocks us down toward average. So we won't really be seeing below average temperatures or significantly colder conditions out there. It'll just be back around the average, which will be 70s inland and 60s along the coast. But enjoy the warmth that we have in store for today.